A lot of modeling just involves moving these edges, faces, and vertices in order to get the actual shape that you want. So again, some of the selection tricks we learned in an earlier video will become helpful here. So if I right click and go to edge and double click on this edge, you'll see it selects this entire edge loop all the way around to there. And that means I can now slide this edge forward and back to get some of the shape I want. If I want to grab this top edge as well, I can hold shift and select those two. And now I can slide this around. However, cars are pretty symmetrical. Usually, however the right side of the car looks is pretty much how the left side of the car looks as well. So we want to be able to work with some symmetry on this as well. If I go back to my object mode and go up to the top on my status bar, you'll see we have this symmetry option. If I click the little drop down menu on symmetry, I can choose object Z in my case, because if I notice, this is my Z axis. I am mirroring across the Z axis of the object. Now if I choose a vertex on my Z axis on one side and move it, it'll move it on the other side. Don't forget to turn this off again later when you're when you're not needing it. So, so this will take a little time, but I'm going to use vertex, edge, and face to slowly manipulate this object and all of the components until it looks a little bit more like the car for my reference. So, the thing that is different about this car though than our reference is that this car is very boxy. You'll see that there's a lot of sharp edges and that although cars have sharp edges, this doesn't always feel like this nice organic rounded shape we're seeing in our car. So, I'll show you a trick to temporarily smooth this car and make it look a little bit more organic. However, when we do that, we're going to lose some of this shape that we've already created. So, as we learned earlier in Maya, four is wireframe, five is shaded, six will show us any textures that are on the car, and seven is lit. I'm gonna go back to five so I can see it in shaded mode. Right next to those shortcut keys are the numbers one, two, and three. This will allow us to temporarily smooth our object. So, for example, if I hit three, my object is gonna become very rounded, almost too rounded. If I hit one, the object will go back to the unsmoothed version. If I hit two, I'll be able to see a preview of the unsmoothed version while the smooth version is shaded underneath that. So now I have a little bit of a problem. The unsmoothed version is too sharp. The smoothed version is too smooth. How do we get some of that definition back? In order to do this, we're going to have to add some additional edge loops to our model. Now earlier, we learned that if I go to Polycube 3, I could turn up the subdivisions. But now that I've made some major changes to this model, if I do that, it's not going to work so good. If I change this from two to five, you'll see my model really messes up. So we're going to have to insert some edge loops in here using a different tool. I'm currently in the modeling menu. And so if I go up to mesh tools, you'll find insert edge loop. If I click insert edge loop, you'll see that my cursor changes to a pointy arrow. And if I find an edge here and click, you'll see that it inserts an edge loop. And as long as I hold down click, I can slide that along this edge to place it where I want it. Now, if I put this closer to the front of the car and release it. Now, when I hit three, you'll see that the front of my car is a little sharper than it was before. If I hit W, I can go back and double click that edge 
and slide that forward and backwards and you'll see the difference that that makes in the roundedness of the front of my car. Using this insert edge loop tool and other modeling tools, I can start to get a more refined form out of my car model. If I go back to mesh tools and insert edge loop again, I can insert an edge loop closer to the bottom of my car model in order to sharpen up this edge. You'll see now the bottom of my car is a little sharper. If I wanted to sharpen up the hood edge, can click here, and again, we start getting a little more control over this form. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and add some wheels to my car. Since I'm being kind of simple with this model, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm more than likely going to see this from a little bit further away, so there's no real reason to add lug nuts to the wheels. I'm just going to go back to my object mode, and instead of trying to create wheels on this mesh, I'm just going to create a completely new object for wheels. I'm going to create a cylinder, and you'll see that we have a single cylinder. If I hold down E, I can rotate that. And if I want to make sure that I rotate it perfectly in 90 degrees, I can just type 90 into my rotate X. I'm going to move my object over in my Z axis. You'll notice that earlier we did that as well with my car. And to make sure that I'm moving it over the same amount, I can always go to my car model and see how far in Z I moved it. I moved it 1.617. So if I move this cylinder 1.617 as well, you'll see that it lines up perfectly. I can then start to scale my cylinder down. I'm going to scale it uniformly at first to get the entire thing closer to the size of the wheels. And then I'm going to elongate it in my Y axis this way to sort of create a single wheel unit that I can place on my car. Now again, if I look at my reference, I'll notice that wheels are actually much bigger in proportion to the rest of the car. So I can scale that up again if I hit R. This time instead of scaling proportionally from the center, I'm just going to scale in this plane. So if I grab this part of the scale locator, you'll see I'm only scaling in X and Z, and I'm still maintaining the Y scale that I already had. And this will allow me to get a more appropriate sized set of tires. If I look back at my reference, I'll see that maybe those need to go back just a touch more. So I need a second set of tires in the back of the car. I could go through that whole process again of creating a cylinder and resizing it, or I could just make a duplicate of this object. You've probably learned in other programs that you can use Control C, Control V to copy and paste objects. Although that works in Maya as well, I strongly discourage you using that method. Maya instead has a better method to duplicate an object. It's just Control D for duplicate and we will get a second set of wheels that we can move to the back. Now the reason I discourage Control C and Control V is if I go to my outliner, you'll see that I currently have Polycylinder 2 selected, and if I hit Control D, it creates a second object that's just called Polycylinder 3. I'm gonna hit Undo to undo that. However, if I hit Control C, Control V, I get a much messier solution. I get an empty group node, and underneath it, I get another copy of Polycylinder 2 with the word pasted in front of it. These two extra nodes will make your outliner much more complicated as you go along. So Control D is going to work much better. Let's go ahead and delete that. 